University of Georgia's college newspaper, 1999 brought a 4-H summer, hazy, hot, humid, and historic. For the first time in the paper's history, an African-American led the team. And on this week, Mark Anthony Thomas was finishing up his last of the weekly summer semester editions. After we've laid out and pasted everything on the page, after advertising gets us their stuff and our production manager puts it all together, I read over the paper to make sure that everything is correct and not live. So you know, I'm the last one to make sure that we don't get in trouble for anything that could potentially cause a lawsuit or endanger the papers that are existing. With the final edition on the streets, we sat down with the man in charge to find out just how things went this summer. My summer semester goals as editor-in-chief, my theme was work in progress. During the summertime, you have a lot of opportunities to just work with your staff and just grow and watch the mature, watch each member of the staff mature and develop as a writer. So like I mentioned, my theme was work in progress, and I wanted each issue to show that we worked hard but as we progress, to show that our progression was occurring. This is um, a version of that block. Well, you did have a long time with our team of candidates, too, but you have also Andy. Yeah, and then you Yeah, Kristen. It's waiting on Amy D. That's why it hasn't printed yet. Right. A lot of times, uh, what we consider news is what consists of the 10 or 12 staff writers. And if those staff writers and news editors don't consider that news, it may get left out of the paper. That's why you bring in that diverse group of people when, when you see a lot of people graduate and you try to get a good mixture of people so that when you're creating that news that you have an op option of letting everyone on campus get their information and announcements and events considered news. Ironically, Thomas is making history at the same time that his hometown of Stone Mountain, Georgia, has its first African-American elected mayor. As Thomas goes into his junior year, he's very quick to indicate the significance of his tenure in the history of the University of Georgia. Although it may come 20 years late, but it shows that we are progressing and that we're moving forward and now we've had first black air in chief, the first SGA president, and the first homecoming queen that's black and so that this university has opportunities for minority students. The red and black isn't Thomas's only major activity on campus. In fact, he's a member of the Arch Society, a group of campus ambassadors who, among other things, serve during university-wide activities. But to the position of editor-in-chief, Thomas brought the unique perspective of a member of one of the nation's oldest black fraternities, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I think it actually it allows us better connections with Greek life officials because if you have an editor-in-chief that's involved in Greek life, then, you know, that editor is very, you know, I have pretty good connections with the Greek life community and the student affairs community as a whole. So you open up actually more doors when you have someone that's involved as well. I think a person of color brings to the paper a different perspective of what is considered news. Like I may consider a step show news, but a white person may only see that as, oh, that's just another event. But a step show to me may be pretty huge and something that deserves a lot of coverage. And just looking in the past, red and blacks, when there are more minorities working for staff, you tended to see more minority coverage. And as the years went on, a lot of black staff writers graduated, and then it just seemed like there was a period where there wasn't any coverage from any minority events or functions, or unless it was something bad. So I think when you bring a person of color in, you bring that, you open that gateway to a whole another dimension of campus. Most college newspaper editors go to publications like newspapers or magazines, but many go over to the broadcast side and work in places like this, my workplace, here at WXIA Television, the NBC affiliate in Atlanta, Georgia. After I graduate, I, well, I love to be an in-debt reporter, to work for a, a firm like 2020 or CNN and just be out there in the fields working with our people and just showing, 
you know, uh, this is wrong and I want you to fix this and this credit card, credit card fraud is going on and just find ways to help better the society we live in. And I think in-debt reporting would be my gateway to that. So how does he want history to write about Mark Anthony Thomas, editor-in-chief of the Red and Black? Okay, it's good being known as the first black editor-in-chief, but I don't want to be known as only the first black editor-in-chief. So 20 years from now, I want people to still remember who Mark Anthony Thomas was for the quality of journalism he created and the, his ability to write and his personality. But also, I, you know, I enjoy having the first black editor-in-chief tagged onto that name. The summer may be over, but for Mark Anthony Thomas, his efforts to bring about more diversity at UGA's newspaper will continue in the fall. We have a new writer's editor, which, which is what I'll be in the fall semester. And as the new writer's editor, I'll be out looking for just talent in all kinds of areas, not just blacks or whites, but Asians and Hispanics, because you need a very diverse staff. Because everyone who has an opportunity to an ability to write should have that opportunity at the Red and Black.